In this episode, we got a guy who needs some advice. He was suspicious, snooped, and then ended up leaving his girlfriend. Let's see what we can do to help him. I was with her from June until several weeks ago. She was super awesome, but also, in my view, super shady. I blindsided her pretty hard by leaving her. Sorry in advance for the novel, but I think the details are important. We met on Tinder and hit it off immediately, as we shared lots of common interests, maybe more than anyone else I've ever met. We actually matched while she was visiting a friend in the city where I live, but she was living in a college town about 100 miles away. The good first two weeks of knowing each other was from Tinder messages and texts only. Finally, went and met up with her in real life, and she was far more awesome than I expected. Anyways, I was taking online summer classes at my university, and she was unemployed due to COVID. So even though she technically had lived 100 plus miles away, she basically lived with me for most of the summer, lying to her parents about where she was. Fast forward to the autumn semester, and we go from living with each other for two to three weeks straight per month to seeing each other for one to three days a couple of times per month. It was around this time a family friend of hers, basically her godmother, died. Though she faced it really bravely at first, it came to consume her and she quickly became depressed, anxious, and her eating disorder got worse. A week or so after the funeral, I didn't go and she was totally fine with that. I came to visit her and she was acting funny. We talked and she expressed how she'd been feeling very depressed given the death and that she missed me often, but that was it. I took her word for it and tried to do my best to be there for her and suspected nothing. The next day, however, we were doing homework together and were talking about a painting she was studying for class. I'm a musician and she was an art student, so it was fun to discuss art and music. Soon after, she left to go to work and while she was gone, I noticed her laptop was open. I thought it might be fun to look at the pieces she was studying for class and talk to her about them when she got home. Instead, I noticed her messenger app, the one for sending iMessages on your computer, sitting next to her notes. Front and center were texts to her friend about how she wished I wasn't there, how I wish she would just teleport away, and her friend asking her, how's the breakup going? With my girlfriend replying, not good. I was appalled. I knew coming to visit her that she hadn't been doing great. But even being there in person, I had no inkling that she wanted to break up. She totally hid that from me. I did the wrong thing and with her computer open, I kept snooping. She'd expressed to the same friend as above once that she didn't love me the same way as she loved her ex. After coming for me to meet my parents, she excitedly texted her friend about how wealthy my parents are. I present fairly middle class myself as that's how I grew up, but my parents do well for themselves now. I found texts to a guy friend several months into our relationship where my girlfriend described me as the boy I'm screwing and my friend. She sent pictures of herself to her guy friend that I took of her while omitting to send a single picture of me and her together. Meanwhile, this guy friend, which I only heard about once or twice, would occasionally send her texts about how horny he was or about how many times he jacked off that day. In her texts, she would always brush him off but it made me feel so gross that my girlfriend was even entertaining this guy with conversations about those things when I knew nothing about him from her end. She eventually got back from work, and I decided the best thing for both of us was to not bring up the snooping I'd done. I knew it was incredibly wrong to spy, but I felt I'd learn important things that would determine my moves forward. Throughout that night, continued to act as normal as she had been when I arrived. The next morning, I packed up early and told her I felt she didn't want me around, as I had found out from the text to her friend but she vehemently denied it. We eventually agreed to break up, and my decision to leave her and leave town was devastating to her. Almost immediately, after I'd gotten home, she started texting me again. After about a week or so of awkward back and forth, we decided to give it another go. She told me that our relationship was the only healthy one she'd ever been in, and that she loved me earnestly. As she was busy with school and work, we didn't visit each other for another month. But when we finally saw each other again, it truly felt like we were working towards the level of trust and intimacy we used to have. Trouble began again for me when she would talk in her sleep. Several times while we were sleeping, she would roll over and call me by another guy's name or be talking to another guy's by name in her dreams. I chalked it up to randomness of the subconscious and ignored it. We didn't see each other again until just before Christmas when she came to visit for my birthday. Due to COVID, there wasn't much to do besides hanging out at home, but it was all right. Trouble struck again on the final day she was visiting, which happened to be my birthday. I had been woken up the night before by her rolling over, putting her arm around me, and saying, I love you, insert other guy's name here. So I started the day pretty sad or mad. She also refused to wake up and slept in till nearly 1pm. 
She told me she was going to bake me a cake the day before, but decided not to. Had nothing planned, and I ended up buying us a nice lunch with my own money. To top it all off, she decided she was not going to spend the night, as she had planned three to four weeks earlier, but instead left a day early. I ended up spending most of my birthday with her sitting on the couch and the entire evening alone as she left early. I'm not a needy person when it comes to birthdays, presents, surprises, but the extremely low level of effort combined with being called another guy's name in bed the night before left me sad, mad, and more suspicious than ever. I went through Christmas time feeling pretty dejected about the whole relationship, but it didn't cost me much more than an hour a day of texting or phone calls, choices went with it. The last straw for me was her not texting me all evening on Friday and early January. Finally, got a tipsy text from her late that night that she'd been out getting coffee and drinks with one of her guy friends she hadn't seen in months. Though she worked 50 to 60 hours per week and had only seen me three times in the past 15 weeks, she had the afternoon and evening off and decided not to spend it with me. I would never ask a significant other to distance themselves from seeing their friends. That's abusive. But when she said, I wish I could have been grabbing a drink with you, when there seemed no intention of that, I snapped. It was the disingenuous move that broke the camel's back for me. The next day I told her about my reservations about our relationship and how I felt like she had stopped caring and wasn't being completely honest about her lingering emotions for her exes. I asked her about the guy she called me in her sleep the night before my birthday and she told me she had no idea who he was. Five minutes looking at social media and Venmo, yeah, I know, it was creepy, and I knew she was flat out lying. He was her ex, friends with benefits, a month or two before we met. I knew at that point I couldn't go on anymore. I never expect a girlfriend of mine to give me the rundown on their entire past, but don't lie to me. I took her completely by surprise that I decided to leave for good and she ended up getting pretty angry at me for breaking up. I'm several weeks single at this point and don't feel great, but I'm doing alright. It sucks because the girl was incredibly perfect for me in a number of ways that are very important to me. On the other hand, a great deal of problems I had with the relationship originated from my suspicion of her and snooping through social media, Venmo, and on her computer once several months ago. In the end, I think I did the right thing for myself, but confronting the fact that my doubts seem to be rooted in my own insecurity and inability to trust has had me wondering how to grow and move forward. Lord of the Low End is the first to chime in. You read her plan, dude. She was pretty clear talking to her friend that with you, she saw dollar signs. You literally stayed in a relationship with a girl you knew didn't like you and was eyeing your parents' money. You said, because the cost of participation was only texting? That's passivity. If you don't look forward to talking to someone, maybe don't be in a relationship with them. SSBB08 adds, OP finds out she didn't like him around, was planning on breaking up, that she didn't love him the same way as her ex, that she was extremely inappropriate with another man, hiding her relationship with said man, and outright admits she's excited his parents are rich. OP. She was incredibly perfect for me. Rose tinted glasses are a thing OP. Give it time and you'll see that you made the right choice. And the only regret you'll have is not staying broken up the first time. You'll find someone way better for you than this. Cat Fed Hill chimes in. OP will probably reply. But we both like Nickelback. Don't you realize how rare that is? How incredibly perfect we are for each other. Like I said, rose tinted glasses. Having a couple things in common does not make them a perfect match for you. This chick was bad news. You're much better moving on. Monatsia defends the guy. It's very easy for us to be objective, as we have no emotional stakes in this and are pretty unaffected. But I bet that in a few months, OP will look back at this post and situation and berate himself for missing the flags and staying in a relationship he wasn't committed to. Feel fine I lie? Thanks. This type of crap is so common in modern dating. I think as soon as you get that gut feeling something's off, it's best to attempt to talk it out. Then, if nothing's solved, just bail. And don't take girls you meet on Tinder seriously. Just don't. A pack the man adds, I mean, I found my fiancé, soon to be wife on Tinder. A girl also stole money I gave her for drugs. X, I think. I can't remember now. And stopped contact by sending me pics of her in bed with another girl. Guess it can be a box of chocolates. Feel fine, I lie, replies back. I know what you mean, man. I think because I went through a pretty high volume of girls on Tinder and found some absolute bad ones, it puts a bad taste in my mouth. Like, I've literally been stabbed by a girl off Tinder. And I won't even go into the amount I met who told me about their boyfriend after sleeping with them. It's just my experience and observation, but if you met a good girl on there, then she's an outlier. Or you're mistaken. I have been. But I stand by my initial Tinder opinion 
I'd say by rough estimate, you find an okay decent girl per 50 dates, and those odds aren't worth the effort. Or have been insanely unlucky, and who I've met. <laughs> Honestly, observations and inferences I've put together from Tinder versus girls I've dated who don't or haven't used Tinder is a pretty interesting topic that I could talk about all day, to be honest. <laughs> APAC Demand comes back with, I've heard pretty similar stuff from guys I've met, so I think I've just been lucky. I've had a few ons, none look particularly bad, and pretty much only two that I saw more than once. One being the girl that stole my money and my fiancé. I realized how special she was, and knew, even though I liked partying and hooking up, that giving that up was worth a real relationship. The only advice I'd give anyone trying Tinder, not you, you sound like a veteran, <laughs> is don't take it too seriously. You might meet good people. You might meet crap people. It's the luck of the draw. But be safe and have fun. Feel fine I lie's last comment about this. You sound like a good dude. I hope it works out with your fiancé. I agree that giving up, partying and hooking up is pretty easy when you find that person. It's just the rarity of that person. Which I guess is what makes such a small sacrifice relatively easy. And yeah, I fully agree. Don't take Tinder seriously. It's what I was saying, but I worded it way more negatively. <laughs> and then APAC Demand rounds out that conversation thread. Thanks man, really appreciate it. And yeah, giving it up for a special person makes it easy. Have to treasure those people because they definitely are rare. Even though I had some fun on Tinder, I'm honestly glad I don't foresee going back on ever again. Our last comment comes from Into Exodus and gets back to the story at hand. The girl wasn't perfect for you. The girl you thought she was, was perfect for you. Big difference there. Good on you for leaving, man. You should have stuck with it the first time, but I know how it goes. You've made the right call for yourself here. Stick to your guns and look forward. There's plenty of sweethearts out there to make you forget about this one. Thank you for watching the Red World. If you enjoyed this video, please give a like, subscribe, and see you in the next one.